Hi, my name is Jack from Painted Legion, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to make a scheme for the Queen of the Xersai herself, Rek'Sai, from League of Legends. Now, if you're not familiar with the lore of Runeterra, Rek'Sai is a void beast that has made her home in the deserts of Shurima, where she and her smaller spawn ambush those foolish enough to travel through her territory from their underground tunnels. And if you're a League player that stumbled on this video, the Tyranids are an intergalactic hive mind species slowly infesting the Milky Way galaxy from below the galactic plane consuming any and all life along the way and using that collected biomass to spawn more Tyranid and repeating the process until they've scoured the galaxy of all living things. Now in this video, I'll give you an idea on my thought process on making a scheme based on a piece of artwork and maybe you can use those principles to come up with your own ideas. Leave a comment if you can think of any interesting ones and I might give them a try in the future. So to start off, I went with a base coat of Xerus Purple over a black primer and then I washed it with Draconoff Nightshade. And then I had a decision to make. There are two ways I could go with painting Rek'Sai. On one hand, I could go with the Legends of Runeterra artwork that has a fairly muted and more realistic color palette, with the focus being on that glowing pink dorsal fin on Rek'Sai's back. I went with this originally since I thought the glowy dorsal fin thing would be a fun thing to try. And you can see the test model I did on the right there, but I wasn't a huge fan of how it looked on the Termagant spines. So instead, I chose to go with the more vibrant and cartoonish artwork of Rek'Sai from the main game, League of Legends. I thought this would make for a more interesting model in the end, and I really wanted to paint with more pinkish colors for this video. So I then went in with a heavy dry brush of Warlord Purple to try and get a match for that bright pink colored flesh. And then to finish off the flesh, I went with a slightly cooler tone so it didn't look too cartoony. I did a final dry brush highlight of Dakala Lilac on the most prominent details. Now with the flesh done, I blacked out all the details and started on Rek'Sai's blue chitin. The artwork looks very blue at first glance, but to my eye, there's a very slight green in there too, which I used as an excuse to use my favorite blue-green paint, stick it on scale green. It took two thin layers to get a strong base coat, and then I took my Black Templar contrast paint and painted it into the chitin recesses to get some definition between the chitin plates. Next, I highlighted the chitin plates with Sotek Green using a feathering motion, holding the paintbrush somewhere between 45 degrees and perpendicular to the model, and using a quick feathering motion on the edge of each of the plates. This particular technique is, is less so about painting Rek'Sai and more so a technique that makes Tyranids look really good. It emphasizes that organic alien feel that we want to give for our scary intergalactic devouring alien species. So with each of those plates highlighted, I didn't want to step away too much from blue. I wanted to pull it back. With our final highlight, we'll go in with Temple Guard Blue, which is a rough match to the highlights on Rek'Sai's armor. And with that highlight, it'll read more as blue as opposed to blue green. So we're doing this particular highlight a bit more sparingly than we did with the Sotek green, but we're not being shy either. We're getting that color on there, just in slightly smaller dots and slightly further up the armor plate than we did with the previous highlight. And with that done, we can go in and paint some of the details. I picked up rock gray. I wiped off most of the paint onto a tissue paper. And then I just lightly, I'm lightly brushing over the, the vents on the gun and also the arms, just to pick out the raised areas. I'm not flooding the whole area with this color. I just wanted to pick out those details. And that'll make uh, the next step a bit easier, where we're gonna go in with Flesh Terror's Red and just fill in those gaps. I forgot to mention, with that rock gray, we're also gonna paint in the tongue and the eyes. Now there isn't really any reference to this color with Rek'Sai, and I've probably, in, there's an argument to be made that I could have gone in with uh, maybe a purple, a darker purple, for this particular step, but actually I felt that this might be an interesting color to add. So I went with red instead. With those details painted red, we're gonna make it look a bit more fleshy. So we're gonna pick up Kislev Flesh and I do not have much paint on my brush at all. I've wiped most of it off. I'm being really, really careful with this step. And I'm just gonna pick out those raised details in those vents so that we've got the red in the recesses and we've got that Kislev Flesh on the raised parts. Part of having a lot of the paint wiped off my brush means that when I dab my brush onto these details, like you can see on the side of the tongue there, it's not making a hard color. It's very slightly transparent. It's transparent, it's slightly transparent paint anyway. Um, but because I've got so little on there, the layer I'm putting on there is very, very thin. So some of that red is still showing through. And where this Kislev flesh and the red are a very different color, because I'm using such thin layers, it means that the difference between those two colors isn't too stark straight away. So just be careful when using this color. And I'm using it neat from the pot. So I wouldn't recommend uh, watering it down too much at all. Otherwise you might lose control of it and it'll go into the recesses. 
Then we're going to finish up the details on this model. We still need to paint the, the claws and the hooves. I'm going to start with Skaven Blight Dinge, doing an edge highlight on those uh, claws and hooves. And then we'll do that same feathering motion we did for the chitin on the gun chitin. And to finish that off, we'll do a final smaller highlight of Storm Vermin Fur on the most raised details on the talons and the hooves. And really subtle feathering highlights on the gun chitin. Now, Rek'Sai's teeth are a bone color. So we're going to go in with Xandri Dust and paint in those teeth, making sure that we leave a black line between each tooth for definition. And we'll highlight with Screaming Skull, just putting a dot on the end of each tooth. Now, Rek'Sai's blind, so I'm just going to use my favorite color for Tyranid eyes. I'm going to go in with Chaos Layer Orange on each of the eyes on the gun and uh, the eyes on the termagant, and then highlight that with Uriel, Uriel Yellow. And there we are, there's the finished model. I put it on a desert base to mimic uh, the deserts of Shirima that Rek'Sai are from. And if you enjoyed that, uh, please check out some of my other Tyranid painting tutorials. There's a playlist for them on the right there. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.